Hey guys, so I'm going to show you a few interesting, or uh, I guess I would title this How to Make Money in Magic the Gathering, although this is, the title will offend plenty of people, I'm sure. And I'm moving stuff around, I just have like fat packs all over the place because I make all my videos in one go. And yes, so I'm going to show you very quickly. Uh, so these are visions, obviously, and these are Path to Exiles. Uh, very. So I have nine of each, so I'm going to talk about how to build up your collection very quickly uh, right now. So this is not going to apply like five years. If you watch this video like five months from now, you're going to be like, what the hell is he talking about? Here's what happens. Um, your store, every single store, even the smallest store has between 40 to 45 promos. I know this because obviously I help with stores. Um, they come in packs of five and your store is given quite a bit of them. The issue with this promo is the promo is very good, but it's not good for standard players. So if your store is standard, the majority of your player base has no use for this actual card. They might actually prefer, you know, promo, some other promo over this promo, though the promo, you know, like Path to Exile and then this type of promo, the Vision promo is more valuable. They might just prefer more standard cards because that's how people behave. And how you go about getting some value from this, remember, Every single F and M, eight of these are given away. I would assume seven of those people could care less about them, and they are willing to trade them into standard staples, uh, planeswalkers. They will trade multiples of them. Maybe they keep one for EDH. There's a very heavy EDH crowd at uh, the to two locals I play at, but no one's gonna want like four of them because honestly, no one plays standard. Um, no one plays modern where I play. So these are very easy to get at a good price or to trade equally for. And the reason that if you're trading equal for these cards, you're actually making out very well is because I have no idea if uh, Jace is going to go up or down. I have no idea if Liliana will go up or down. This card will be stable. This card is a staple <laughs> and it will be stable. And they are very easy to obtain right now. And when I mean very easy, you have players who, uh, at my FNM, there's only like 10 players. So like if you finish eight, you could take a really bad deck and finish eight and then easily trade this in for like, um, let's say like some new dragons you need. Maybe you need a lightning dragon. Maybe you need this dude. I don't really have much standard in this deck. Uh, maybe you need this dude. Or maybe you need, um, I don't have much standard in this. Coco, maybe you need Liliana. Maybe you need, um, I don't know, a, um, a, a dragon lord. Who knows what? Oh, geez, my respects. Who knows what you need? But you for sure don't need this card if you are standard only. And if if I know anything about standard players, they are very very likely to trade modern into standard without a you giving them a premium. And the reason that this will work out well for you, you don't need to worry about this card. This card is a ten twelve dollar card down the road. It will be even if it's reprinted. If it's reprinted, it won't be reprinted as a common. That's not gonna happen. Maybe as an uncommon. But definitely Path to Exile has been reprinted to Oblivion. But the artwork in this one, I prefer it over even, you know, Teresa Nielsen. And that's like almost hearsay, right? But uh, I love that it's, you know, it seems to be a uh, Jace and it seems like he's on a journey. Um, and it just reminds me of, it just reminds me so much of Path to Exile that I couldn't imagine playing with a non-promo version of it from this point on. Uh, the Teresa Nielsen one doesn't really remind me of Path to Exile. That's not how I would imagine a card for it. I mean, this is amazing. It's a dude on a journey, whoever he is. It looks, to me, I think it's Jace. Uh, and yeah, so that's how you can kind of build up your collection and you build up slowly. You keep trading, you keep trading. Remember, eight of these are given out. I would say at least six of those people, like if you're in a standard slash draft place like I am at, six of those people have no, they really don't want this card. They don't want it, they wanna get rid of it, they want standard cards. Hey, I'll pick them up, right? So anyway, that's how to make, how to build a magic collection uh, from use, just trading. And that's how you trade. And all, of, so Path of Exile and Serum Visions, eventually they will dry up but then there'll be a new card to trade for, and then there'll be a new one, and then there'll be a new one, and then a new, like, that's how it works, right? Like, uh, this is not a good example of the trade binder uh, that would show you this, but if you figure out a card that you love, then just go after it. 
Uh, there's no reason to wait. Anyway, so these promos are going to be extremely, they're going to at least hold value, but I can see them going up because good taxing pro promo is, you know, good taxing pro. Well, it wasn't reprinted. That's a bad example. Anyway, to uh, summarize, Path to XR promo, good, readily available, easily to trade, easy to trade for. Serum Vision promo, better, readily available, easy to trade for. Bye, guys.